Tracy delay, everyone. Um, so as requested by our Pile Center, Atiling in Chicago. So we are going to do a short recording of uh, Buddhist music, Tibetan Buddhist, Buddhist music. And just to introduce a little bit about Buddhism and Tibetan Buddhism, if you are not familiar, then um, Buddha Shakyamuni came to this world in India about 2,500 years ago. And then uh, he got enlightened at the age of 36 and all the way to 81. So he was teaching various um, teachings and now all these teachings which are the authentic teaching of Buddha Shakyamuni spread throughout the world and depending upon how people are emphasizing on various teachings so we have now the Theravadan teaching which is popular in uh, Thailand, Sri Lanka, Burma and other places and then we have the uh, Mahayana teaching which is popular in China and maybe Japan and some other places. And then we have what is called the Vajrayana teaching or in the West known as Tibetan Buddhism spread in Tibet uh, in various phases. So it uh, first started maybe around 5th century in Tibet and gradually the more kind of became uh, uh, to say that more flourished in uh, 8th century. So that time uh, the great Dharma king uh, Tisong Dejan invited Indian scholar Shantarakshita and then he um, propagated the monk culture tradition and also the teachings on the Sutrayana teaching and then uh, the Dharma king invited uh, Padmasambhava which we call Guru Rinpoche to Tibet and then he is he is the main person to spread uh, the Vajrayana teaching in Tibet. And during that time, of course, there were other great scholars like Vimala Mitra and great Panditas of uh, India were invited to Tibet. And then there were great Tibetan scholars, translators like Vairajana uh, and other great translators who translated the entire teaching of uh, you know, Buddhism into Tibetan and this is how it spread in Tibet and then gradually after the 8th century then maybe about 100 years afterwards there was some kind of a declining uh, dec you know, of Tibetan Buddhism and then later on again uh, the uh, revival started in Tibetan Buddhism. So that then those, uh, the teachings that was first brought to Tibet, mm -hmm. so, and the, for their followers are called Nyingmapas that we follow, or the old translation school. And then the later on, then there is the new translation school, which gradually uh, developed into uh, you know, either three or four traditions. is the Kaju tradition, the Saja tradition, and 
uh, the Keluk tradition, and now we also have the Jonang tradition, and all of them are collectively known as the New Translation School. So of this, then we are following the Nyingma, the old translation. Uh, and within the Nyingma also, then there are various, again, kind of uh, monasteries. We call them as the six uh, mother monasteries. And they, uh, these mother monasteries, although the, uh, the teaching that we practice is there's no much difference. But in terms of how uh, the uh, rituals are performed, you know, that we will be showing right afterwards, and then how, uh, you know, different kinds of rituals, traditions, so a little bit of variation uh, are there. So in that way, then in Nyingma, the old school, we have six mother monasteries. Of the six mother monasteries, then we are following what is known as the Payul tradition. So the Payul tradition was started in 16th century uh, by uh, you know, Rixin Kunzan Sherup, who was the student of a great Tertun, Tertun uh, Mijur Dorje, and also was the student of Changmi Rinpoche, and uh, then they <coughs> formed this uh, Payul tradition. So from 16th century up to now, about now, um, almost 400 years, then this tradition has been uh, kept alive through what is known, we call it as the throne holder, the lineage uh, holders. So then our 11th lineage holder was His Holiness Penorimuche, uh, and who uh, you know, entered Parinirvana or uh, passed on in uh, 2009. And then, um, and then uh, he was succeeded by our current uh, lineage holder, His Holiness Karma Kuchin Rinpoche, and the reincarnation of uh, His Holiness Penu Rinpoche was uh, recognized, and now he's 10 years old, and he's going through all these, you know, uh, tra trainings so that he can uphold the pure pure lineage. Okay, this is basically the introduction of Buddhism in general and then the Payul. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about this, uh, the, uh, the ritual um, music that we play when we do the rituals. And in Tibetan Buddhism, the, the ritual or the puja has become kind of a main way of practicing. Of course, in Tibetan Buddhism, there are two ways. One way of practicing is without any rituals, you like you can just keep on meditating. So during in that kind of an, uh, meditation, then you don't need any of these uh, uh, ritual uh, instruments or musics or whatever. But then in the uh, uh, when we do these rituals, which is basically related uh, with a uh, deity practice. When you do this deity practice, then uh, the essence of the deity practice or is to see all the forms, whatever you see as the deities, whatever uh, you hear the sound as the uh, mantra, and then all these thoughts also in their primordial crown are pure. So these are, this is the essence of doing all these uh, uh, rituals, to see the pure essence or primordial e pure essence in all phenomena. And how you can uh, do that, one of the techniques one of the methods used 
is using these different kinds of instruments. So when you use this music, so there is a vibration, there is an energy, and that energy help us to transform ourselves. into this divine form, into the uh, deity. So this is kind of the main essence of doing this, uh, uh, the uh, practices that we call it as the deity yoga practices. And so it, to boost our uh, ability to see everything as uh, pure, everything as divine, then we are using this, the vibration of these different uh, musics, musical instruments. And then when you do this, uh, uh, play these musical instruments, it's not just like an ordinary orchestra, or what you call that, like ordinary music uh, instruments. What we do is, again, each time when we play all these different uh, musical instruments, then we do the blessings. So there are all these different, uh, you know, uh, recitation of the mantra, and and in that way, all uh, the musical instruments are being blessed, so that they carry this sacred vibration, carry the sacred sound, and in that way we think that, or we believe that whoever hear this uh, musical instrument this uh, dharma music, so in them, then uh, the seed of liberation is sown. Or you can think about now, it's a way of opening up themselves. Gradually, it can happen either in this life or in some other life. So the connection, whoever hears this uh, dharma sound, then they, there is a connection uh, you know, uh, with the dharma and with your inner uh, enlightened being 
and, and that will this will help us to increase our inner uh, basic uh, goodness within ourselves. And now we can um, kind of show you one and I'll try to explain that a little bit. And then we have very limited monks here and then our monks will try to uh, play these musical instruments. So now mm, this one is called uh, Vajra. And this one is known as, and of course, the bell. So uh, in the uh, puja, the uh, monks use this uh, Vajra and bell. So the Vajra uh, represent the method. Um, bell represent the wisdom in general. And then, uh, of course, there are all these detailed explanation of this uh, 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 the Vajra and Bell, which I'm not going to go in detail. So, um, then when, <coughs> when uh, you ring this bell, then the sound of the be uh, bell thinking that it is coming out everything from emptiness represents the wisdom. Okay, so I'm going to play this now. Okay, and then this is also played with uh, the um, Damaru. Again, this Damaru, the small one, has the two sides. Again, all the sound is again uh, represented that one side is the method and one side is the uh, wisdom and then the combination of the method and wisdom so it then is the sound so this is the sound that you know how all mm, the sound is the resonance of emptiness okay I'm now I'm going to play this <laughs> one that we uh, will be playing is the conch that Lama is holding the, uh, and uh, this conch is played uh, this is the sound of Dharma and this was first played you know like when we uh, are kind of gathering people and also as a way to lead in this uh, the different uh, uh, music and all these chantings. <laughs> next instrument that we will be playing is called kangling and here there are two kinds one this is made out of thigh bone of human beings maybe a little bit scary anyhow then again this is represented by uh, made out of metals also and that lamas will be playing afterwards so this you can think about invoking mainly uh, you know kind of all those spirits uh, in the uh, uh, the ritual pujas what is done is now all these different kinds of enlightened uh, spirits unenlightened beings they are all invited. No one is excluded. So, um, 
So to, I'm going to invite them to join the uh, this uh, the ritual, the practices. So this uh, kangling is being played. Next uh, instrument that we are going to play is uh, called Jaling, which is the uh, Dharma flute. Uh, it is played in, during the, uh, the ritual on special occasion, especially uh, related with the uh, invitation of uh, the various deities that you are practicing and also to make uh, the musical offering to all these deities and it is also played at the end the auspiciousness so to bring good luck fortune auspiciousness in the place where we are doing these dharma practices and all over the world so this uh, musical instrument is being played during our pujas. Okay. The next uh, will be now uh, playing all these different instruments uh, together. The Rolmo, which is uh, used by the chant master as the main way to keep uh, face of these different chantings. And also between mm, different sections of our uh, DT yoga practices. So this uh, Rolmo is being played and this uh, the Rolmo is accompanied with other in, uh, musical instruments so there will be the drum and then uh, the dungmar the long uh, horn is also played together and then um, this uh, the bell and then the small drummer so all will is played together so we'll try to illustrate that uh, to play all of them together simultaneously just now. Okay, so these are some of the uh, kind of general, uh, you know, introduction to uh, all these uh, different musical instruments that we play 
when we do the puja. And now, thank you.